Oh, Nelly, if you're living in Coral Gables, moving to Coral Gables, or thinking about visiting, you do not want to miss this video. This is the definitive top 10 list of the best tourist attractions and landmarks in the entire city of Coral Gables. Jake Fletcher here, realtor with the Fletcher Group and EXP Realty. And if you guys have any questions whatsoever about Miami or Miami real estate, I'm your go-to guy. All my contact info is below. Reach out anytime and I'd love to help you out. Let's jump into the video. Coral Gables in Miami, Florida is one of the most enchanting and enjoyable neighborhoods to live in the entire country. The City Beautiful, as it's called, was incorporated in 1925 and is home to world-class dining, shopping, tourist attractions, and landmarks, as well as splendid flora and exotic fauna. Hey there friends, my name is Jake Fletcher, Realtor with the Fletcher Group and EXP Realty right here in Miami, Florida. And if you're excited to learn the best tourist attractions and landmarks in Coral Gables, do me a solid for the YouTube algorithms and go ahead and smash that like button. Coral Gables is a Mediterranean-themed planned community known for its historic and affluent character. In this video, we'll be going over the top 10 tourist attractions and landmarks that you can enjoy whether you live in Coral Gables, are planning to move here, or are just visiting. I first moved to Coral Gables 16 years ago to attend the University of Miami, which spans 239 acres of the city. I've traveled all around the United States, and the more I've traveled, the more convinced I am that there truly is no place like Coral Gables. So let's get into our list of the top 10 tourist attractions and landmarks in the city beautiful. Number one, the Venetian Pool. Completed in 1924, the Venetian Pool is a historic swimming pool like no other. Originally, it was a rock quarry that was used to supply the coral rock that many of the first homes in Coral Gables were built from, as well as many ornamental features of the community. You can still see many of these houses and ornamental features in the surrounding area today. The quarry was abandoned in 1921 and then reopened in 1924 as the Venetian Casino by George Merrick, real estate developer and the one who planned and built Coral Gables in a bid to draw interest to the city. In the early days, the pool would be routinely drained to host performances by the Miami Symphony in further attempts to allure outsiders to want to move to Coral Gables. His plan worked, and the pool has had a long and storied history since. For residents of Coral Gables, admission is $6.50 for ages 13 and up, and $5.15 for under 13. For non-residents, admission is $16 for children and $21 for adults. Number 2. Fairchild Tropical Botanic Gardens Open to the public in 1938, Fairchild Tropical Botanic Gardens is an 83-acre botanic garden on Biscayne Bay with extensive collections of rare tropical plants including palms, cycads, flowering trees, vines, bromeliads, and orchids to name a few. But more than just a botanic garden, Fairchild is a museum, laboratory, learning center, and conservation research facility whose main role is preserving biodiversity. They're also home to the only rainforest in the continental United States, the largest collection of tropical bamboo in the world at 125 species, and a really cool indoor butterfly garden. In 2012, Fairchild became the home of the American Orchid Society, and the garden hosts one of the most impressive walkthrough orchid exhibits that I've ever seen. The garden was established in 1936 by Robert H. Montgomery and named after his friend, renowned plant explorer David Fairchild, who brought more than 75,000 different plants to the United States. There is way more cool stuff to say about Fairchild than we have time for, and it's not only one of my favorite places to visit in Miami, but a must visit whenever I have out-of-town guests. Admission is $25 for adults, $18 for seniors, $16 for students with ID, $12 for kids 6 to 17 years old, and free for kids under 5. Number 3. The Granada Golf Course Designed and opened in 1923, the Granada Golf Course is Florida's oldest 9-hole course. It's a par 36 and features a restaurant and pro shop. The course is adorned by some of the largest and most majestic banyan trees that you'll ever see. And it's so fun to play because there are no water hazards, very few sand traps, and almost every hole is relatively straight ahead. So if you're like me and you're a very amateur golfer, you'll have a lot of fun on this course, located just outside the downtown Coral Gables area. 
There are a range of different greens fees. For residents riding in a cart, it's $34 or $20 if you're walking. And for non-residents, it's $39 to ride and $25 to walk. Number four, Geralda Plaza. Geralda Plaza is an outdoor shopping mall and pedestrian promenade which hosts some of the best dining and vibes in Coral Gables all on one street. Prior to its dramatic conversion, which began in 2015, Geralda Avenue was a two-lane road with parallel parking and narrow sidewalks, limiting the opportunity for outdoor dining and entertainment in a space that had also been coined as Restaurant Row. Despite being marketed as Restaurant Row, many businesses struggled and even closed before Geralda evolved. In October 2017, Geralda Plaza reopened as a tree-shaded, carless environment filled with cafe tables for the restaurants, bars, and storefronts. It has since hosted regular art installments such as Umbrella Sky, where hundreds of brightly colored umbrellas gently swayed over the newly transformed Geralda Plaza. It's also home to one of my favorite hangouts, Sabata Rooftop, Coral Gables' first rooftop restaurant and cocktail bar. Number five, Miracle Mile. Contrary to what the name suggests, Miracle Mile is only 0.503 miles long, but it's packed with high-end shopping, some of Miami's best restaurants, and the historic Miracle Theater. It's the main road east to west through the center of downtown Coral Gables and is the heart of life in the city beautiful. Like all of Coral Gables commercial district, Miracle Mile was designed by George Merrick. Upon its construction, every business in Coral Gables was less than a two block walk from Miracle Mile. It's also home to the Colonnade Building, which was Merrick's home base for his Coral Gables sales center, which also housed a parachute factory in World War II. The boundaries of the mile, as it's sometimes referred to as, is Coral Gables City Hall on Lejeune Road and Douglas Road on the other end. Miracle Mile is also home to Fratellino's, one of my personal favorite restaurants and what I believe is one of, if not the best Italian place in all of Miami. Number six, Matheson Hammock Park. Spanning 630 acres, Matheson Hammock is an urban park which surrounds the north and western ends of Fairchild Tropical Botanic Gardens, so you can easily enjoy both in the same day. Matheson Hammock is known for its unusual feature, a man-made circular atoll pool and beach which is flushed naturally with the tidal action of nearby Biscayne Bay. Its tranquil, breeze-swept beach is a haven for families who enjoy its warm, safe waters and beautiful waterside views. Its active breezes and calm, shallow waters make it a prime spot for kiteboarding, and there's usually on-site vendors to get you started if you don't have your own gear. The park also has a full-service marina, snack bar, picnic pavilions, and nature trails. There's also another one of my favorite restaurants here, Redfish Grill by celebrity chef, Chef Adrian, which is built into a historic coral rock building. They have great drinks, some of the best seafood around, and unparalleled scenic vibes. Parking costs $5 per car on weekdays and $7 on weekends and holidays. Number seven, the Merrick House. Built in 1906, the Merrick House, also known as Merrick Manor, is a historic house located at 907 Coral Way. It was originally constructed as the childhood residence of George E. Merrick, founder of the city of Coral Gables, and in 1973, it was added to the National Register of Historic Places, and since then, it has been restored to its 1925 appearance. The house showcases Merrick family art, books, photographs, furniture, and other belongings. Reverend Solomon G. Merrick withdrew his life savings and in 1899 purchased the original homestead sight unseen along with the surrounding 160 acres for a total of $1,100. Then they turned the land into a giant grapefruit grove to sustain their family, but it was anything but easy going. There's tons of super interesting history to learn about the Merrick family, Merrick Manor, and their role in the history of Coral Gables. If you're interested in a guided tour, they happen most weekends and are only $5 cash for adults. Number eight, the shops at Merrick Park. Opened in 2002, the Shops at Merrick Park is an upscale outdoor shopping mall which features designer brand stores, a seven screen movie theater, and some great dining options. With over 88 different stores ranging from jewelry, clothes, makeup, houseware, food, and more, you're sure to find something for even the most discerning shoppers. There's even a luxury gym called Equinox. My personal favorite restaurant at the Shops is Sea Grill. Number nine, the Alhambra Water Tower. Built in 1924 and dubbed the lighthouse which has never seen the sea, 
The Alhambra water tower serves as a testament to founder George Merrick's vision for the city of Coral Gables and a time when everyday things could be turned into works of art. Purchased by Consumer Water Company in 1926, the Alhambra water tower was part of the city's domestic water supply system until 1931, when it was disconnected from the system and abandoned after the utility company started buying water from the city of Miami. The city purchased it for a token sum in 1958 to avoid the destruction of this unique landmark. In 1993, the tower was extensively restored based on 1924 photographs and it was listed in the Coral Gables Register of Historic Places in 1998. It's not the most interactive attraction on our list, but it certainly is a beautiful hidden gem and worth taking in. Number 10, the Biltmore Hotel and Golf Course. I had to leave one of my favorites for last. The Biltmore is an absolutely gorgeous and famous landmark of Coral Gables with a long history and one of the best golf courses in all of Miami. This luxury hotel was designed and built in 1926 and was inspired by the Geralda, the medieval tower of the Cathedral of Seville. It served as a hospital during World War II and as a VA hospital and campus of the University of Miami Medical School until 1968. Abandoned for many years, it was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1986 and became a hotel again in 1987. A whole host of famous guests frequented the hotel since the beginning, including President Franklin D. Roosevelt, the Vanderbilts, the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, and Al Capone to name a few. Legend has it that notorious gangster Al Capone may have run a speakeasy out of the multi-story 13th floor Everglades suite though the evidence of this is dubious considering it was the Prohibition era. The Biltmore Golf Course is world class and definitely worth playing if you're a golfer. It's very well maintained and the golf carts have GPS technology which tells you how far your ball is from the current pin position which is pretty cool. It's a little pricey though at $112 for Coral Gables residents, $143 for Miami-Dade residents, $209 for hotel guests, and $227 for visitors to play 18 holes. But in my opinion, totally worth it. Bonus time! I got a bonus attraction for you all for being so kind to watch this video to the end. And here it is. While you're at the Biltmore, look across the street and you'll find a really cool looking building called the Church of the Little Flower. It's a Roman Catholic church founded in 1926, and the church's domed 1951 building was constructed in Spanish Renaissance style, in keeping with the Mediterranean Revival architecture for which Coral Gables is noted. The church members have long been conspicuously upscale. Both Floridian contenders for the 2019 Republican nomination for president, Jeb Bush and Marco Rubio, attend Little Flower with their families. The Rubios were actually married at the church. And that does it for our list of the top 10 tourist attractions and landmarks in Coral Gables. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if so, please consider smashing the like button, subscribing, and sharing this video with anyone who might be traveling to or is interested in visiting the city beautiful. Drop a comment below if there are any places that you feel like should have made my list but didn't. I'd love to hear what you all have to say. And if you or anyone you know is looking to buy or sell real estate in the Miami area, all my contact info is below and I would love to help. Thanks for watching.